Wherever you are in the world, hope you're having a great day. My name is Tony Roig here at the Into Pickle channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to take a paddle from this to this. In other words, where it comes from the factory to getting it ready to play with a particular focus on adding lead tape to the paddle. So if you're interested in lead tape, this video is going to be the most comprehensive video out there on lead tape, understanding why we use it, understanding where to apply it, etc. So we're going to dive into that now. Um, as we dive into the lead tape, we need to start with understanding the concept of paddle weight, because when we're adding lead tape to our paddle, what we're doing is we're changing the weight of the paddle. When you think of the weight of the paddle, it has two different types of weight. Um, it has its scale weight or gross weight. This is the amount that the paddle weighs when you lay it on a scale. This paddle here is about an eight ounce paddle uh, coming straight from the factory. Swing weight is how the paddle feels when you swing it through the air. So, you know, you're hitting, say, like a backhand uh, ground stroke or you're hitting a forehand volley. The way the paddle feels in your arm is impacted by the swing weight. Higher swing weight means more power into your shot, but also higher strain on your arm. Lower swing weight's the inverse. I have these two hammers here to demonstrate. So these two hammers are roughly the same length, right? Um, but this is a sledgehammer, obviously a small sledgehammer. And this is a little peen hammer. Peen, I think it is. Uh, tell me in the comments if that's right. Peen, I think. P-E-N, if you know. So the sledgehammer, right, when I swing it, it is going to destroy anything that I hit with it. But it places a tremendous amount of strain on my arm. The smaller peen hammer is going to not impart that much power into whatever I'm hitting, but it's much lighter on my arm. It also affects the speed at which I can deploy it, right? So this hammer, I can swing around pretty easily from side to side. When I pick up a sledgehammer, it's going to be much harder to get that hammer from side to side. So if you think of a paddle that has a heavy swing weight, so a lot of weight at the top like that sledgehammer, it's going to be much harder for me to get the paddle from side to side when I want to get, you know, I'm trying to defend over here. I can't get the paddle there. So when you think about swing weight or, or paddle weight, Swing weight is really the more important characteristic. Gross weight is important because it impacts swing weight. The heavier your gross weight you start with, the higher the swing weight possibility. But at the end of the day, what you're most concerned with is the swing weight of the paddle, how it feels and the weight it has as you swing it when you play. Which brings us to our lead tape. So the idea of lead tape is there are these little strips. You can also get them in rolls. I'll put a, a photo of one here, and I'll put some links in the descriptions below to these as well as the um, the long rolls. Um, they, they make it for golf clubs. You can buy those, they're thicker and heavier. There's thinner ones that are made uh, for pickleball. They'll fit you know, a paddle like this. It's kind of narrow uh, pretty easily. But uh, these, these uh, I've transitioned from the tapes, the long tapes, the rolls, to these uh, little pieces. Uh, two, uh, four of these is about a half ounce. So two or a quarter ounce basically. Uh, and they're super easy to apply. If you, and if you look at them in terms of the cost per ounce or cost per gram, these work out pretty well and they're just easier to use. So basically you have these lead tape pieces, right? Whether it's a roll or these. And what you're doing is you're going to be applying them to the edge of the paddle to accomplish a certain objective. Now there's two different types of, two different areas where you apply lead tape or, or where lead tape will affect the way the paddle plays. One is in the amount of power that you're going to generate with the paddle. So basically going back to the sledgehammer idea, the more tape I add to the end of my paddle, the heavier it swings through the air, the more energy is going to impact import into the ball as it strikes the ball. So lead tape can be used to affect or change the power of your paddle. There, what you're going to do is be putting the, the tape more towards the head of the paddle. That said, warning, be careful with that. Because, you know, if you just load up a whole bunch of tape up here, now you're making a paddle that is going to put more strain on your arm and also is going to make it harder to move it around. So there's there's always, like anything in life, right? There's pros and cons. There's, there's uh, you're giving something up. You're not just gaining power. You're giving up mobility of the paddle, speed of the paddle, as well as the amount of uh, stress you're putting on your arm. So that's one characteristic of adding lead uh, tape to your paddle. The other characteristic has to do with the balance of the paddle, and we're going to talk about ballasting in a second. At the end of the video, I forgot to mention this earlier, I'm going to show you something that you can use to actually not just weight your paddle, but also protect your paddle to complete the preparation of your paddle. So stay tuned for that at the end of the video. So when we talk about balance of the paddle, what we're talking about there is, you know, it, it's like a ballast on the ship, you know, so if you think about a, a ballast on the bottom of a ship, basically it keeps that ship upright in the water. 
that ballasting allows the the item not to flutter so much. So what happens is you're you're facing bangers, right? So they're smacking balls at you. If you're hitting balls off center, right, what can happen is your paddle can rotate in your hand because it doesn't have a counterweight. So what you'll see is you'll see you'll see tape put on the on the edges of the on the sides of the paddle, I should say, nine and three. That helps with ballasting so that you can um, so that you can avoid that kind of fluttering of on the paddle. So there, what you're looking for is you're looking for tape on the sides. For power, you're looking for tape more on the top for or towards the top, not necessarily on the top. For ballasting, you're looking for tape on the sides or lead on the sides in order to ballast it out. As we work through this, just a word of warning here. I've seen a lot of players out there who just take lead tape and they wrap it all the way around their paddle. Pretty much all you're doing there is you're just making your paddle heavier all the way around, right? It does provide some ballasting because it's heavier, right? Just a heavier item. Uh, but just be careful with that idea. There's other ways of doing it that are more micro, more surgical, if you will. Uh, and I'm going to share with you three different concepts that you can use to decide what lead tape is best for you. Another thing that's cool about these kind of things is that you can move them around. So as an example, you know, this was this is a piece of, of uh, this tape, this uh, protective tape, and it had some strips on it. So I can move it around and I can uh, feel different um, different. The sensations, right? How the paddle feels as I move the weight around the paddle so I can find what's right for me. Uh, at the end of the day, what you want to do is find out what's right for you as opposed to just taking lead tape and just throwing it all over the paddle. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about location. So all around the Civic of Paddles, if you're looking for a paddle right now, our good friends at Total Pickleball will take care of you. I'll put our code up here. You can use at checkout and I'll put a link down below to Total Pickleball. If you want to add power, right? A lot of power to your shots. You're going to take lead tape here, let's say like four pieces like this, right? And you would basically stick them along the top of your paddle. That's going to make your paddle way heavier up here relatively relative to its factory weight. And then you're going to be able to really just drive through those balls. Again, warning, you're making your paddle head heavier, harder to move around as well as tension on the arm. So just be careful of that. But that's how you would generate maximum power with lead tape. If you're trying to ballast, putting it on the side. So a lot of times you think about it in terms of like nine and three o'clock. So you can put some weight there. That'll help with ballasting. Now, let me tell you how I do it. The way that I do it is I use a ballasting technique, but I value racket or paddle speed, right? So paddle, uh, how maneuverable my paddle is, is very important to me. So rather than put the my tape here or here, what I do is I put the tape here and here. So closer to the throat down here. That provides the ballasting because I have weight on the top and the bottom. So if a ball gets hit here, this weight can counter it, or here, this weight will counter it. But it puts the weight closer to my hand. The closer that these weights are to your hand, the less they affect the swing weight of the paddle uh, because it's closer to your hand, right? So the farther away, the more leverage it has, the more lever. The closer to your hand, the less lever it has. So when you're thinking about lead tape, think about what you're trying to accomplish, right? Are you trying to accomplish more power or you're trying to accomplish more balancing, right? More substantial feel of your paddle um, in terms of where you start applying your lead tape. Remember, you can move them around as you go. One other concept on this is the moving, putting lead tape on your paddle may affect your sweet spot. Okay. And the sweet spot is just where it feels nice to hit your ball. Usually your sweet spot is somewhere around here on your paddle. So if I put lead weights up here, usually I'm going to be pulling it towards there. If I put it down here, I'll be pulling a little bit down. So it can affect your sweet weight location on your paddle. Uh, I'm going to show you how to protect your paddle now. But before I do, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Again, it helps us reach other players. And let us know in the comments below what you do for your paddle. Where do you put your lead tape? Do you use lead tape? Um, have you studied swing weight and things like that? Do you think about it as you work on your lead tape? Or you're just applying lead tape to your paddle. No criticism of that, but this is another way of thinking about, um, you know, being more intentional, right, with your decision making as you work on your paddle prep. So the other thing I wanted to share with you as an extra bonus, and I'll show you how I have it on this paddle here. So this paddle has some lead tape under here, and I covered it with this uh, protective tape. And you can see that this tape here is kind of scuffed up, up in these corners. Actually, I'll peel it off so you can see. But what happens is, you know, as pickleball players, you know, we tend to to, to drag the paddle sometimes or to, to, to uh, pull it along the, especially on the corners, right, of the paddle on the court. So what happens is you can see here where these holes have developed on the tape. So these holes here, if that tape wasn't on that paddle, what would have happened was um, 
the paddle would have taken the brunt of the core, right? So this paddle would be scratched. Instead, I have a little bit of glue on there, but the paddle itself is in pretty good shape. So what I can do is I take this off as I just did. I take this tape and I put it on there uh, and it protects the paddle from getting damaged by the core. Particularly important if you're playing with a paddle that has an edge guard on it, because that edge guard generally is part of the paddle's um, uh, design architecture, right? It, 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 the integrity of the paddle is dependent on the edge guard. So if you put this kind of edge tape on there, you're going to protect that edge guard a little bit more. It'll extend the life of your paddle. Plus, it'll just look better over the long term. It'll stay in better shape. Um, I like this tape a lot. I'll put a link down below to this tape and to the to the lead tapes as well. Um, but the um, this tape is a really good tape. It's it's really thick and and you can feel it. I've tried other tapes like this one here. Um, I just don't they don't provide the same kind of protection. They're not as thick, uh, and they just don't uh, they don't adhere as well. Some players you see them use electric tape. That's fine. But electric tape is not as thick as this tape here and it's not going to give you the same type of protection. So that is how you take a paddle that looks like this from the factory and make it a paddle like this that's more suited to your play, more customized to your play by using lead tape to adjust the uh, adjust your paddle. And then once you have these kind of uh, uh, materials in your possession, you know, overgrips and uh, uh, protective tape and lead tape, you can decide whether you want to keep it nice and organized like this, like my wife Jill does, or you can throw in something like this, like I do. Hope that helped you understand better paddle weight and how to customize your paddle. And I look forward to seeing you in your next video.